The Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> the Great Gildersleeve is brought to you transcribed by the Kraft Foods Company. And Kraft, you know, makes the famous pasteurized processed cheese food, Velveeta. Velveeta has a wonderful cheddar cheese flavor that's rich yet delightfully mild. It's delicious, and it's the finest quality cheese food you can buy because it's made by Kraft, the name that for years has meant only the finest in cheese and cheese foods. Get a package or loaf of Velveeta tomorrow and enjoy the cheese food of top quality Velveeta, made only by Kraft. <laughs> Well, let's see what's doing with the great Gildersleeve and his nephew, Leroy. There has always been a very warm relationship between the boy and his bachelor uncle. Right now, they're planning their vacation trip together. Oh, boy, I can't wait till school's out. Yeah, that'll be the day, Leroy. We'll spend the last two weeks in June at Bass Lake. Why don't we rent a trailer? We'll be staying in a cabin. I know, the trailer's for the fish. What? We'll need a big one to haul them home. <laughs> Just think, on two whole weeks together, just you and me. Yeah. Away from everybody. Since Miss Olsen came to town, I've hardly seen you. Well, Leroy, it hasn't been that bad. Oh, yes, it has. You took her to the baseball game the other night instead of me. Well, she doesn't know as much about baseball as you do. I wanted to explain the game to her. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean by that? I bet you don't even remember which team won. Hey, well, let's see. Summerfield lost. Who was playing Summerfield? Oh, brother, I'll bet you sat there listening to that Frenchy accent of hers and the usher had to tell you when the game was over. Leroy, you make it sound like I've gone overboard for Miss Olsen. Yeah. Well, you're wrong. After all these years, your old uncle has a pretty solid defense against women. Now, why don't we get out our fishing tackle and check it over? It isn't too early. Swell, huh? All right, Bertie. Miss Gilsey's resident. Yes, he's here, Miss Olson. Miss Olson, huh? No, for corn's sake. Yes, sir. Miss Gilsey! Coming, Bertie. I might have known it. Yeah, I'll be right back, Leroy. Oh, sure. Uh, thank you, Bertie. Yes, sir. Hello, Marie. Hello, Truck Morton. I hope I'm not taking you away from something. Oh, no need. Leroy and I are just talking about our vacation. Wonderful. When do you plan to go? Well, we thought we'd take the last two weeks in June. Do a little fishing. The last two weeks in June? Oh, that's too bad. What? I'm taking my vacation the first two weeks in July. That means I won't see you for a whole month, Morton. Well, you know what they say. Absence makes the heart grow fonder. I've never believed that. I'm going to miss you, Morton. Yeah, I'll miss you too, Marie. June nights are so beautiful. Yeah. I always loved June nights with the moon and all. Hey, Uncle, what's this about a moon? Leroy. I wish I could change my plans, but I have to go in July or not at all. Well... I wouldn't think of having Leroy miss his fishing trip, but if you could take him when I'm out of town, we'd all be happy. Well... Couldn't you do that for Marie, Trockmorton? Eh... Uh... Well... Please, Trockmorton. Well, they do say July's a good fishing month. Same as June's a good moon month. <laughs> then in July, everybody can go away and have a wonderful vacation. It sounds logical to me. I hope you don't think it's silly for wanting to be with you. No, indeed, that's logical, too. Wonderful. I'm so glad I phoned you. you so am I. Goodbye, Trockmorton. Goodbye, Marie. Yes, my boy. What's this about fishing in July? Well, I thought we might take our vacation then. We have all summer, you know. You said we were going fishing in June, right after school's out. Well, I know, but... Heck, all the fish may be caught by July. There'll be fish in July. They'll even be bigger. I know who the big fish is. No, <laughs> well, Leroy, if we wait till July... I can't wait till July. The bluegill are biting right now. Why would anybody rather go with a 
a girl and go fishing. <laughs> what a boy. Someday he'll discover there's a big difference between a bluegill and a redhead. <laughs> Good morning, Leroy. Bert, did you hear about Unc putting off our vacation? Oh, don't worry about it, Leroy. You'll catch your fish. Yeah, but it's just the principle of the thing. Miss Olsen's got him hypnotized. All she has to do is call up and say, I know talk, Martin. This is Marie. And he comes apart at the scene. <laughs> he turns into a big glob of jelly. <laughs> well, that's because she talks so nice. Oh, she's too nice. One word from her and he forgets all about our big trip. Well, she's got to come hear the voice that says, Man, you ain't going nowhere. Gosh, I don't know if I can wait until July. Besides, Unc's so gone, he may not even make it through June. What you mean? June's the month everybody goes off his rocker and gets married. <laughs> Gosh, I just had a horrible thought. What's that? If Unc should marry Miss Olsen, he'd probably want to spend his vacation with her. I wouldn't be surprised. I'd never get to do anything with Unc. Oh, I don't think Mr. Gilsey will marry her. You know? She likes him, but he's outrun girls before. Well, he's older now. He's slowing up. <laughs> Uh-oh, here he comes now. I better go pour his coffee. Good morning, everybody. Morning, Mr. Gilsey. Hi. Here's your hot coffee. Here, yeah, thank you, Bertie. Yes, sir. Excuse me, I'll go get breakfast. Have you had breakfast, Leroy? Yeah. Why are you so glum, my boy? I still want to go fishing in June. Leroy, we'll go in July. I give you my word. Oh, sure. When July comes, Miss Olsen may want to change things again, and you'll say August. Oh, for... And in August, you'll say September, and that's when I have to go back to school. Say, any chance of going in September? <laughs> <laughs> Leroy, you'll not skip school to go fishing. Okay. I want to go in June anyway. Now, don't be stubborn, or I won't tell you about my little surprise. What surprise? I called Charlie Anderson last night. He has a lot of fishing tackle. And he's going to drop it by the office this morning. Yeah? How'd you like to go down with me and pick out what we want? Oh, boy, swell. Here's your breakfast, Miss Gilsleeve. Yeah, thank you, Bertie. You hear that, Bertie? We're really going fishing. Unc's back on the beam. I've never been off the beam, have I, Bertie? Well, all Bertie will say is if you're out catching fish, you can't get caught yourself. <laughs> got about all the tackle we need. Spinners, hooks, plugs. Good. You pick out what you want. You're head man. First lieutenant in charge of fish. Keen. I got it all sorted. You'll yeah, take your time. We've got all day together. Gosh, this is swell, Unc. Picking out fish and tackle. Just you and me. Us men. Who's that out in the hall? Sounds like a girl. She's coming in the office. I'll have to go out and tell her the water department's closed. Yeah. Tell her men at work. You bet. Hello, <laughs> Trock Martin. Well, Marie. Oh, for corn's sake. She trails us like a bloodhound. You had a nice surprise. What brings you to City Hall this morning? I came down to see about my driver's license. Oh? Well, come in and chat a while. Oh, grown. I'd like to. Since I was in the building, I couldn't resist dropping in to see you. Oh, hello, Leroy. Hi. Uh, won't you sit down, Marie? Oh, I don't know if I should. You two look busy. Yeah, we're pretty busy. You don't know. No, stay. It isn't often I have such a pretty visitor. Thank you. Besides, this is fun. When people get to my private office, they usually have a complaint. I have no complaints about you, Trockmorton. <laughs> Mush. It... <laughs> yeah, Marie. Sit in this easy chair at my desk. You have a very nice office. Yeah, thank you. You must be a very brilliant man, Trockmorton. Who's that? To be able to run such a tremendous enterprise as the water department. Oh, well, big job, all right. 
You have water mains running in all directions, and you sit here, manipulating the controls like a maestro at a giant pipe organ. Yeah. <laughs> this is sickening. <laughs> of course, I couldn't do a thing without my faithful employees out at the reservoir. What did you do at the reservoir? Last time he was there, he fell in. <laughs> well, Leroy, I was trying to get to the bottom of some trouble. Chalk Morton. I'll bet you're just a sort of executive who doesn't mind taking off his coat and rolling up his sleeves to get the job done. Right, George Marie, you size up the situation very quickly. So do I. What have you been doing this morning? Your tie's crooked. Oh? Here, let me straighten it for you. <laughs> hey, um, I guess we better sort our fishing tackle, huh? Uh, no hurry. We have until July, my boy. Well, I want to do it today. That's very admirable, Leroy. When you start something, finish it. I intend to. Well, perhaps I should go, Trockmorton. Goodbye, Miss Olson. <laughs> uh, goodbye, Leroy. You know, I, I see you have a package, Marie. Why not I take it out to the car? Oh, it's only a little box of stationery. Yeah, I know, but a gentleman doesn't let a lady carry her own packages. If you insist. See you later, Leroy. Yeah, see you in July. Leroy. The Great Gildersleeve will be back in just a minute. Anyone care to second a nomination? Because I'd like to make a nomination for the best cook in the world title. Who do I nominate? Planner of a thousand or more meals a year. Planner of meals that have to be good tasting, nourishing, and economical. Mrs. Housewife, who not only deserves more credit for that wonderful cooking job, but more important, deserves every bit of help she can get. All kinds of help. For example, there are certain foods that are not only delicious and nourishing, but also extra easy to repair in a variety of ways. Velveeta is one of these foods. Kraft's famous pasteurized processed cheese food melts so smooth and easy, it's perfect for omelets, souffles, casseroles, and for a versatile cheese sauce that's grand over vegetables, seafood, eggs, macaroni, or plain toast. To make this golden cheese sauce, just melt a half pound of Velveeta in the top of your double boiler. Then stir in a third of a cup of milk, season, and enjoy it. You'll enjoy the fine, rich, yet mild cheddar cheese flavor Velveeta adds. And you'll be glad to know that two ounces of Velveeta, the amount in an average serving, supplies more of milk's vital food values than an eight-ounce glass of milk. What's more, Velveeta gives you thrifty main dishes. Let Velveeta make your job of meal planning and preparing easier. Take home a two-pound loaf of Velveeta tomorrow. Just be sure you get genuine Velveeta the finest quality cheese food you can buy. It's made only by Kraft. Well, when Leroy's vacation fishing trip was postponed because of Miss Marie Olson, he became convinced that she had the elusive water commissioner halfway to the altar. But Leroy isn't going to give up his uncle without a fight. Bertie, she's planning every move. She's like a spider spinning a web. And Unc's walking into it like a big, fat bug. <laughs> I gotta do something before it's too late. Unc's a changed man. Boy, you can't expect anybody in love to act normal. Well, what do you suppose will happen to you and me when she moves in here and takes over? Uh-oh. That'll be the day. Anybody comes messing around Bertie's kitchen, that'll be the day. At a boy, Bertie. Anybody comes messing around Bertie's kitchen, somebody's gonna have to move. And Bertie ain't gonna pack no bag. Leroy! Yunk! Oh, hello, Bertie. Hello, Miss Gilsley. Uh, Leroy, I know you were a little upset when our morning at the office was interrupted. That's okay. Well, I'm looking forward to us doing other things together. Yeah? How about going to the ball game tonight? Oh, I'd like to. But it just happens I have a date with Marie. Oh, I forgot. You taking her to another ball game? No, no. She suggested we spend a quiet evening together. Oh, fine. In fact, I was about to ask Bertie if she'd prepare a little dinner for us. Will you, Bertie? Cooking dinner is one of the things I get paid for. Well, I'd like it to be a little special. Miss Olson is quite an expert cook herself. When Bertie cooks, it's always special. Nobody's going to out-expert Bertie. 
Yeah, well, I just thought I'd mention that she knows her way around the kitchen. Bertie knows her way around the kitchen, too. Yeah, I know, Bertie. There's only one thing Bertie wants to say. Everybody keep to their own kitchen. <laughs> What's wrong with Bertie? <laughs> Oh, hi, Leroy. Unc says I need a haircut. Yeah? Well, I don't want to beat myself out of any business, but you could go another week. Uh, Unc's having Miss Olsen over for dinner. He says I got to look sharp. Well, he's been spending a lot of time in here himself. Haircuts, shampoos, massages. He must be gone on the dame. I'll say. He even bought a bottle of imported cologne for me to use on him. French stuff. That was her idea. She gave it to him. Oh, yeah? Well, I tried some when I went home. A dog wouldn't let me in the house. <laughs> I don't blame him. If I'm going to wear that stuff, maybe I should get a French poodle. <laughs> Mr. Munson, I'm afraid I'm going to lose, Unc. No kidding. I thought the commission was going to go smiling through life, outsmarting the women at every turn. I can't outsmart this one. Going off the deep end, huh? And she's pushing him. She might even sweet-talk him into marriage tonight. One of them impatient dames, huh? I'll see. Hate to see her get him alone. Hey, Leroy, why don't you sit it out in the parlor with him? My wife, Lovey's old man, used to do that to me. Hey, you're a friend of Unc's. Why don't you drop over this evening? Me? Look, kid, if I crash his date, the commiss just might resent it. And he's a good customer. Well, would you come if some of the other jolly boys would? To protect Unc? Well, if there's going to be others there, little Floyd will be glad to help the commission keep his feet on the ground. Swell. I'll talk to Mr. Peavy. can I do for you today? Mr. Peavy, could you come over to the house tonight after dinner? I could even come in time for dinner. Well, no, Unc's having Miss Olsen over. Well, I'm sure he doesn't want anybody else around. Mr. Peavy, I'm afraid she's going to talk him into getting married. How's that? She talked Unc into postponing our June fishing trip, so she must have something in mind. Well, perhaps she's afraid he'd bring her some fish. Some people would rather not be remembered with fish. No. No, she got him on the phone and started talking about Moon and June. And that did it. Well, you know, I'll put that up against fish any day. <laughs> Especially with Miss Olsen on the other end of the line. Greetings, baby. Oh, hello, Judge. And Leroy. Hi, Judge Hooker. How are you, my boy? Okay, I guess... I think Leroy's a little concerned about Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah, I just saw Gildy in front of the jewelry store. The jewelry store? Yeah, and he looked happy enough. Was he looking at rings? Well, there were engagement rings in the window. And I recall a miniature bride and groom walking up the aisle to pledge their troth. Here comes the bride. Da, 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 da. Oh, for corn's sake. What? Judge, I don't think Leroy is interested in hearing that tone. Oh? He seems to think Mr. Gildersleeve is contemplating marriage. Well, in spring, even the water commissioner's fancy could turn to something besides water. <laughs> Who's the bride to be? Miss Olson. She's got him jumping through hoops. Oh, a lot of ladies have had him doing that, but he never married one of them. Aren't you letting your imagination run away with you, Leroy? Well, uh, you wouldn't think so if you'd seen her operate. Oh? Why don't you come over tonight and see for yourself? We couldn't do that, Leroy. Far be it from me to meddle in Gildy's affairs, but as an old friend, I don't want him to be swayed against his will. Mr. Munson's coming. You don't tell him. Yeah. He cares what happens to Unc, a fellow jolly boy, even if the rest of you jolly boys don't. Well, it might not hurt to pay our respects, Peavy. Mm, I don't know, Judge. But, Mr. Peavy, you don't approve of quick marriages, do you? Oh, my, no. Unc's only known her about a month. She isn't giving him time to think about it. 
Well, before I married Mrs. Peavy, I thought about it six years. You see? You know what you were doing. Well, now I... <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Peeve, where do you suppose the judge is? Well, Floyd, he said he'd meet us here under the street light. Well, here comes somebody with a flashlight. And that's the judge I know by his squeaky shoes. Hi, Judge. Greetings, gentlemen. Hello, Judge. Well, let's go break this thing up. Now, now, Floyd. I wouldn't put it just that way. But I do feel our mutual friend could be moving hastily. Hmm, could be. Sure, Commission ain't even introduced me to her. Well, I met the young woman and can see where anyone as gullible as Gildy might lose his head. Well, there are those who think Miss Olson is the flirty type. I hear she's got a string of compliments for everybody. And he falls for that. What a pigeon. There ain't anybody could sell me no gold bricks. Let's go break it up. No, no, no. Let's not be obvious about this, Floyd. <clears throat> Who's ever obvious? We'll just pretend that we didn't know Miss Olson is there. Hey, I got it. We'll tell him we thought he was holding a Jolly Boys meeting. He won't see through that, will he, Peavy? Well, no, I wouldn't say that. Well, let's sit down and make ourselves comfortable, Marie. That was a marvelous dinner, Chalk Morton. Rudy's a wonderful cook. Yeah, she certainly beamed when you told her that. How can I get along fine? With nobody here but Bertie. <laughs> Leroy, wouldn't you like to call Piggy or somebody and go to a movie? Mm, I don't think so. I have a feeling Leroy likes to be with grown-ups. Yeah. <laughs> Leroy, if it's a matter of finances, I'll give you the money. Well, I'll take the money, but I don't want to go to the movies. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. I think I'll just stay home tonight. Well, I'll, perhaps you'd like to go upstairs and listen to your little radio. Nope. You look pretty uncomfortable just sitting there on the piano bench. I'm comfortable. Gee, I'm not. Hmm, I wonder who that can be at the door. Yeah, well, run and see, my boy. Okay. Excuse me. Of course. You're yeah, probably one of your little playmates. I hope. Good evening, Leroy. Well, what do you know? What is this? Hi, kid. Leroy? Well, if it isn't Judge Hooker and Mr. Munson and, and Mr. Peavy. Oh, for... Hey, Unc, it's Judge Hooker and Mr. Munson Yeah, and... I know. Oh, won't you come into the parlor? Thank you. Gilday, I see you have company. Yeah, Judge, a lot of it. Good evening, Mr. Gildersleeve, Miss Olson. Hello, Mr. P.V. Hi, Commish. Hello, Floyd. I don't think I met the lady in question. Floyd. <laughs> oh, uh, Miss Olson and uh, Mr. Munson. How do you do, Mr. Munson? Hello. Yeah, I believe you know everybody else. Oh, yes, indeed. We're all here, Gelder, but I wonder if there isn't some mistake. You bet there is. Ain't this the night us jolly boys are meeting at your house? Floyd, you know better than that. Huh? Well, since we're all here, we could have the meeting if Miss Olson doesn't object. Oh, boy! Now, wait just a minute. Why don't you have the meeting, Throckmorton? I'd love to sit in and take the minutes. That is, if you jolly boys have nothing against women. Well... Which of you charming gentlemen is president? Yeah, I am. Don't be taken in, Peavy. I might have known you'd be president, Mr. Peavy. Everyone has the highest regard for your judgment and leadership. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you believe it, Peavy? Judge, you mind your own business. <laughs> <laughs> Look, fellows, this is hardly the night for a Jolly Boys meeting. Oh, Throckmorton. Now, let me see. Who is vice president? I'm vice president. Wonderful. We couldn't have a more distinguished-looking vice president. Well, I, I try to lend dignity to the group. And what an honor to have a famous jurist on the club roster. <laughs> Very kind, Miss Olson. Uh, I'm quite flattered. 
silly old goat. Don't be a sucker. Don't be a sucker, Judge. Floyd, don't whisper in the presence of a lady. Which of you is secretary treasurer? Well, I am, but... Uh, Miss Olson. Yes, Mr. Munson. I ain't no club officer this year, but we meet in my building over the barber shop. Oh? Yeah, I, uh, I donate the room. Then you're the chief benefactor of the group. Yeah, you might say that. Do you hear her, fellas? How about that? <laughs> now, before your meeting... Why don't I see to refreshments? Uh, Marie, that isn't necessary. Let the lady get the refreshments. I'm sure Birdie has more of a wonderful cake. Now, fellows, what's the idea of barging in here tonight? Gildy, we came over to do you a favor. And let's not forget it. Aren't we all here because none of us want you to fall for Miss Olson's line? Oh, my goodness. I wouldn't say that Miss Olson has a line. No. When she thinks the guy deserves a pat on the back, she pats him. I'm here to tell you. Well, wait a minute. <laughs> I-, I thought we agreed that Unc shouldn't marry her. Leroy, I have no intention of marrying her. If you did, I'm sure we jolly boys feel you would not be making a mistake. Yeah, if you don't, you got rocks in your head. <laughs> I'm being double-crossed. All in favor of Mr. Gildersleeve marrying Miss Olson, say aye. 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 No! What a club! The great Gildersleeve will be with us again in just 30 seconds. How much nourishment can you pack into one sandwich? Let's see. A sandwich made with Velveeta, Kraft's famous pasteurized processed cheese food, gives you more of milk's vital food values than a big eight-ounce glass of milk. Imagine, more high-quality protein, calcium, phosphorus, as much riboflavin, and more vitamin A. Let your family enjoy nourishing, delicious Velveeta sandwiches often. Remember, Velveeta is the cheese food that's digestible as milk itself. The cheese food of top quality, made only by Kraft. Well, Bertie, thanks for helping me out last night. Oh, I was glad to do it. Miss Olsen sure is nice. You really like her? Yes, sir. And she's a fine judge of cake. Oh? She said my cake was the best she ever tasted. Well, good. Hi, everybody. Hello, Leroy. Of course, I'm a little worried about Leroy. Why are you worried about me? You seem a little suspicious of Miss Olsen. No, I think she's keen. What? Well, I thought she was soft soap on everybody till I really had a chance to talk to her. Oh? Unc, when I grow up, do you know who I'm going to look like? William Holden. Oh, my goodness. (laughs) Good night, folks. The Great Gildersleeve is played by Willard Waterman and is an NBC Radio Network production. The show is written by John Elliott and Andy White and is transcribed. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Lillian Randolph, Earl Ross, Arthur Q. Bryan, Gladys Holland, and Dick Legrand. Musical compositions by Jack Meekin. This is John Heaston saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next week and every week for the further adventures of the great Gildersleeve. Delicious cold cuts for luncheon or supper make a welcome change of pace from the hot meals you've been serving. Easy to fix, too. But here's a tip. Be sure there's delicious craft prepared mustard on the table. Because when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. There are two kinds of craft mustard. Mild craft mustard so smooth and delicately spiced, and craft mustard with snappy horseradish added to give it extra zip. Keep both kinds on hand for different tastes. Next time, get craft prepared mustard. Now play You Bet Your Life with Groucho Marx on the NBC Radio Network.